Let's see how to enter and edit surface loads in SIPE 3D. To do this, we open the load menu at the top of the interface. We select Introduce Surface Loads to introduce a polygonal surface load. In the Visible Load Case pop-up window, we can choose the load case we wish to view on screen. We can also view all the load cases by marking the corresponding checkbox. Then, we left-click on the points forming the polygon of the outline of the surface load. Once we have finished, we right-click the mouse. Next, the Introduce Surface Loads window appears, where we choose the load case to which the surface load is assigned. The program also displays the positive direction of the load with the downward vertical text if it is a load that does not belong to a wind load case, or if it has the coordinates of a unit vector in the case of wind load cases. The load can be uniform or can vary depending on the height if the surface is not horizontal. In the uniform loads, we simply type in the value and the sign of the load. For the loads that vary depending on the height, we must type in the value at the top level and the value at the bottom level. These correspond to the values and signs of the loads in the bottom Z coordinate and in the top Z coordinate of the surface load. We click Accept in the current window. When a new surface load is introduced, the program automatically detects whether it overlaps with an existing panel. If it does not, we are asked the question, do you wish to create a panel associated with the new surface load? This new panel shares the same shape as the surface load created, and its distribution direction is given by the straight line joining the first two introduction points on the surface. A surface load belongs to the panel in which it is completely contained, so a load is not allowed to overlap more than one panel. Several surface loads with different geometries and values can be applied to a single panel. An example of an application is the creation of load zones with different wind pressures on a sloping roof side. The following option in the menu, Edit Surface Loads, allows the selected surface loads to be modified. As before, only the loads associated with the visible load case are displayed on screen. We select the loads one by one with the left mouse button, or use the crossing method, and then we confirm with the right mouse button. We can modify their data in the surface loads pop-up window. The edit surface load load cases option is similar to the previous one. In this case, after selecting the loads and clicking on the right mouse button, we can only modify the load case assigned to the loads. To create a new surface load by duplicating the data of an existing surface load, we click on Copy Surface Loads. Then, we select a surface load, and the Introduce Surface Loads window appears again, where we specify the load case, the type, and the values for the new surface load. This new load has the same shape and position as the current one. With Move Surface Loads, we can modify the position of the polygon that defines the geometry of the surface load. Before we continue, we must specify whether we wish to also move the loads applied on the same zone belonging to other load cases. After clicking Accept, we must first select the load we wish to modify with the left mouse button and then the vertices of the polygon to be moved. We confirm with the right mouse button. Now, with the left mouse button, we mark an origin and a destination point where we wish to move the indicated reference point, confirming the action with the right mouse button. With Delete Surface Loads, we can delete the surface loads selected among those corresponding to the visible load case. In the same way, after selecting the loads one by one or using the crossing method, we right-click to delete them. Finally, Activate Deactivate Surface Load Assignment allows us to indicate whether one or more bars can be loaded by both panels and surface loads. 
To do this, we select the bars we wish to activate or deactivate with the left mouse button one by one or using the crossing method. Then, we confirm with the right mouse button. The deactivated bars are represented by a dashed line, while activated bars are represented by a continuous line. By default, all bars except ties are activated. The bars that we deactivate do not allow surface loads to be assigned in any load case. This option has no effect on the ties, as they do not allow the loads to be applied. 